This tank behind me is the famous Tiger 131. And we've already done a tank chat here at the museum on Tiger tanks, Tiger 1 tanks in general. This chat, we just want to have a little closer look at Tiger 131 and some of the issues surrounding this classic vehicle. Now, this Tiger left the factory in Germany in February of 1943. It's issued to the 504th Heavy Tank Battalion of the German military, and in March, it's shipped over to Tunisia. This is part of that massive reinforcement Hitler does with the German army in North Africa when he's waking up to the fact it looked like they might be going to lose. Now, the Tiger tank takes part in a spoiling attack against the British in Tunisia uh, in April, and it's captured by the 48th Royal Tank Regiment. It's shipped back to Britain to be evaluated because it's such an important find. Such an important because it's the first complete tiger that's actually captured in the West. We've already come across a tiger, but they had to blow it up because it was in no man's land between the two fighting sides in Tunisia. This is the first one that's actually taken fairly complete. And that's because we think it was damaged, a shell jammed in the turret, and the crew, whether they were injured, we've never been able to pin that down, but they abandoned the tank in pretty fine working order. Um, it's all there, they haven't tried to demolish it, and there's not an awful lot of battle damage on that vehicle. So it's seen by Churchill in Tunis, the king visits it and sees it there as well. It's brought back to the UK for evaluation. It's taken to Horse Guards Parade in London, um, where again they have it facing actually the back of Downing Street. Officially at the time they said it was a, a present from the Fifth Army to Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister. And uh, that's why they put it on the back of Horse Guards Parade, just around the rear of Downing Street. At that time, ironically, Churchill was in Marrakesh, um, recovering from a heart attack he'd suffered. So he wasn't there when they put the tank first on parade. It's then taken to Chertsey, where it's evaluated, and a considerable number of reports are written on this very tank. And that was done so that they could analyze any of the features. Were there things they could copy? Were there things they could learn from this vehicle? Um, and things that military intelligence could understand and disseminate. It was then shown off to the soldiers for a number of years, where it was actually part of the School of Tank Technology, as well as doing some demonstrations where it drove to certain places, did firing trials, and was part of sort of fundraising parades as well. And in 1951, after the war, it was handed over from the School of Tank Technology with a number of German vehicles to the Tank Museum, where it resides to this day. So it sat in the museum for many years. At the end of the 90s, because the Tiger was already seen to be this very classically iconic vehicle that was so much associated with German armor in World War II, a restoration program was begun. And uh, at the end of the 90s, Heritage Lottery Fund kindly gave a grant of money, so the work was carried on there. It was started originally in the museum, went to a local organization called Abro to help out, uh, and it's gone through a number of different stages of restoration and rebuilds to the point that in the early 2000s, we were able to run it for the first time. And now here at the museum, we run it on a fairly regular basis, at least a couple of times a year, and we do a special day around showing it off to the public. So that's the sort of broad outline history of this particular tank. But I just thought we ought to look as well as some of the, not so much cultural significance, but some of the other stories behind this tank. Because don't forget, when this first appeared in Tunisia, this is a weapon of war. This is a vehicle that is out to try and defend the German takings in North Africa. And it's not a weapon of liberation. You have to remember that as well, that this idea that the army it's fighting for um, is, is an oppressive army at the time. Um, so looking some people, and many are still alive today, who would look at this vehicle as a symbol of Nazi oppression. So that's one view of the vehicle. We've also got the fact that when it was captured by British forces, their attitude is that they have a trophy. Not only do we have something we can learn from, but we've also got something we can show off. So that at a certain time, this vehicle, because it has symbols painted on it, um, showing the guys who've captured it, they're showing off the fact. It's like, again, capturing the enemy's flag. Here's their latest weapon, we've grabbed it off you. 
It's looked at for later in the war for its intelligence evaluation, so we're learning things from it. So we're looking at this vehicle from a point of view of how can we understand it? How can we find more about it? So there, it's a source of information for the military. And certain parts of the vehicle at that time, by the way, they were sectioned like the engine, taken apart, which was one of the reasons. Later, it gave the museum the sense of purpose in restoring it to running order because it had never actually been put back correctly and never been put back in a complete manner after that evaluation process. So that long life it's had in the museum has been, again, another part of its story where lots of dads and young boys have come along and seen this vehicle, they've made the models of it, they've bought the postcard, they've read the books about it. Over those decades, subsequently, it's been in the museum. And then we got to the point as well where the tank has then become, in essence, a film star. It went off, uh, appeared in the Fury movie with Brad Pitt, and again, that little scene of its action is looked at numerous times, millions of times, actually, online. The fact that when we take this vehicle out, lots of other people do their own videos about this vehicle, and every time we post or comment on this vehicle, again, there's everybody now has an opinion about tigers. They want to argue about the facts. Are we sure we're getting this right? And the evidence about the tank still changes. Only recently, we've discovered that where we thought the tank was likely to be knocked out, it's now look like it's evidence has come forward that it's actually probably been in a slightly different place when it was knocked out. Similar dates, similar battlefield terrain, but probably at a place called Point 174, not actually at Jebel Jaffa, where we thought it was originally. So new evidence is still coming to life um, to how we might look at this particular tank. And by looking at it in these different ways as a cultural icon that's now been viewed millions of times by people online, by looking at it sometimes as a, a symbol of oppression by some people, um, all those different views we have to remember here at the museum. And it's quite hard sometimes for us to actually present a tank like this in a way that um, actually satisfies all those different audiences' views. How are we going to keep this one and only complete and now still running Tiger Tank um, for future generations, as well as letting people today enjoy seeing it and operate it? If we carry on operating it, we're going to ultimately wear out parts and change what is up to now a relatively original item. So there's a whole host of dilemmas there that we're having to face here now, but also I think they're only going to go and get worse in the future. So this tank has become a, a sort of almost a, a test bed in many areas of certain attitudes towards military equipment, um, looking at how time changes over the certain periods from that Nazi regime as a generation that fought against and in these vehicles are now starting to thin out and disappear from the scene. Are our attitudes again to these vehicles going to change over time? And nowadays, with online gamers, with everyone else wanting the information and uh, access to vehicles like this, what's the best way we look after a vehicle like the Tiger in the future? Um, and again, as custodians of this piece of history, we feel we've got certain very strong obligations. But again, it's one of those interesting things to see how attitudes to a vehicle like this change and will still develop in the future. And with any luck, with any good management, we'll be able to see this vehicle and allow people to see this vehicle, hopefully running, perhaps not forever, but we'll be custodians of it for many decades to come.